Whitehead caught up with the film's South African director Mandla Dube and lead actor Thabo Ramezi in London. A Che Guevara once said that revolution is the greatest act of love. Love for one's people, love for one's country. We're more than just fighters. We're lovers. All we want is freedom. Freedom for children to learn. Freedom for men to work. For mothers to love. For a nation to grow. So essentially it's about a, a young man who sort of gets drawn into the, the struggle, what we call the struggle, which is apartheid South Africa at the time, and uh, he reluctantly gets drawn into a fight because it affects him regardless of whether or not he wants to acknowledge it. And then he gets drawn and goes out into combat and trains to come back into the country to free his people. However, things go terribly wrong when he arrives and an incident, without giving away the movie too much, an incident occurs where two innocent people get killed. Uh, in the line of fire while there's a crossfire between him and the police and he gets charged for that and he Solomon Matlangu himself actually never fires a single shot uh, his friend does who's been brain damaged and as a result can't stand trial so Solomon stands trial and is made to hang for the killings you've mentioned before that this isn't an apartheid film no. um, and you know Mandela films this is this is a different type of, uh, of story but surrounding the same obviously mm. era and struggle yeah, I think essentially when, when I did say that it was, it was not an apartheid film, it was because I think in this story, I think the people were more important than the events. I think for the first time, we, we sat inside the, the, the average child at that time and their family, their household. Whereas if you've seen in previous films, it's always been about the events. He was here at this point, this is what happened. Historical events. We're here, we just track the narrative of human beings and the young people of that era. So I think it's a completely different perspective. And it's done by South Africans, which will change the perspective largely. I think we've we've had a, a bit of a problem with sort of Hollywood and, and even guys from here from England coming down to tell our stories because they didn't want to involve us in telling our own stories. And this is quite a militant sort of objection to that, that no, we, we definitely have the right to tell our own stories. And not only do we have the right, we're bloody well good enough to do it as well. And within that, you're going to see the spirit of South Africans and how we actually experienced it, as opposed to how you guys per maybe perceived it through media and etc. So you're getting a real real intimate perspective of these human beings and not just the events. We will continue to fight. Tabo explained the impact of using a South African cast and just how the film translates with today's generation. So firstly, it's, it's critical to say that I'm the first South African, and I probably stand to be corrected on this, but I doubt anyone will, first South African to play a lead in a story of this nature. So I'm the first person to represent our, us as us. We've always had the Idris Albers, the Denzel Washingtons play our heroes. I, I spoke around about six languages in the films, and those are like indigenous languages from Portuguese to Zulu, Kosa, and etc. So there was a real connection to the people at home. They will recognize and understand something about that. And, and you can hear it's not a foreign accent saying it, it's us. So there's a real connection. And with the 20 years that have passed right now, to, to, to ask ourselves the big questions, have things actually changed? You know, yes, maybe the, the, the freedom fighters have now dawned the, you know, the, the positions of our former oppressors, but have things actually changed? And it's very critical that we ask these questions. And the fact that a movie like this is still relevant right now in South Africa with the political climate as it is, with education the way it is, speaks volumes. And I think this movie definitely is going to chronicle this time period in our lives. The film's director, Mandela Dubey, explained how he worked with Solomon's family in the production. Absolutely, yeah. they worked very closely with me. Uh, what we did with the story was we did it as a stage play at first to see is there an appetite for this type of content and then the response was amazing. And then I did a, an exhibition with the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Uh, the whole concept is called the Legends of Freedom. Uh, these Legends of Freedom are Solomon Masangu, the Rivonia Trialist and the Silverton Siege Trio. So we focused on uh, on Kalushi being the story, the story of Solomon Maslangu. And uh, after doing a stage play and the exhibition, I stepped back and I said, listen, I'm a filmmaker, I'm not a curator, and neither am I a theater director. I would love to see this, uh, you know, turned into a motion picture. Prosecution, please lay the the story of Solomon Maklanglu is not well known. Mandela Dubey told the SABC about the responsibility of depicting this crucial chapter in South Africa's history. It was just try to stay as close as we could to the facts. Try to tell the truth as much as we can. And uh, 
give the actors the liberty to be able to, to freely tell the story. Because a lot of actors in South Africa haven't been given that freedom to, to, to laugh and to cry and in front of the camera about characters that are real. That, you know, and to also, we purposely didn't do it in English alone. You know, it, it's got uh, Sindabela, Zulu, Soto, and Afrikaans and so forth. So that people are able, there are certain nuances and subtleties that you don't want to get when a person starts speaking in a language that you know, they don't hear every single day. So, so we just said, let's just have fun. Let's just stay as close as we can to the facts. And the result is what you see on the screen.